What's going on? Welcome to the Unhippiest Hippie channel. If you like this content and these videos, feel free to subscribe. I'm getting blinded by what I'm getting ready to show you all here. Feel free to subscribe, like the channel. I'm also going to start posting this content on odyssey.com. And that's O-D-Y-S-E-E. -E. It's another creator platform, uh, just in case. But uh, without further ado, we will go ahead and dive into what I'm doing and what's blinding me. So what we're looking at here is some more 2024 T3 all clad. And I've had this for quite some time. I ordered it off of Air Parts Inc. Fairly certain that's the website. Got a couple rows. They were like $5.50 a piece, I think. And starting to do the top skins and the end caps. So the end caps, I had some scrap left over from the first row and I had left the plastic on for quite some time and it ended up getting moisture in it and corroded some of the metal. So it's basically unusable in my opinion. Um, just be mindful of that. Definitely store it in a cool, dry place. It even came with a warning letter to, uh, it said do not keep the PVC on for long periods of time. So now I understand what that meant but uh anyways with the budget uh it's a 25 foot trailer so i, I kind of figured in three rolls anyways i was just trying to get away with two since they were so expensive but with the um custom segmented end cap it's just not going to be an option and i even uh, reused the lower portions of the old with the laminate uh, for under the cabinets and a little bit more protection uh but like on behind the couch and stuff like that so so I'm gonna go ahead and trace this old skin out and cut it out Good morning. It is the very next day. I did uh, get a lot of the end cap done. I did not record a lot. Um, it was fighting daylight here, so it's getting dark at like 6.30 or so. And uh, I did post some pictures on Instagram, which is Alan the Creative. And uh, I got some questions on Facebook as well from my normal timeline and my in the airstream group so i wanted to answer a few of those currently it is sunny and raining and winter is here so i'm going to try to make this a uh, little bit quick on what i want to show you on the outside and get back into the airstream and try to finish up this end cap today so what i have here is my piece of aluminum and a rivet spacing fan tool it puts everything nice and neat and uh, for the for the look of it so what I'm doing on the panel is I'm taking my punch and going every two inches and then drilling the holes out so it looks all uniform and you can set it it's got different settings and measurements on it right here so I've got it set to one inch I'm going every other one so to put them every two inches And just working it down on piece and then over here on the side as well so what you have now hopefully you can see it are little divots in the metal and that tells me where to drill my hole for the pop rivets <clears throat> and that way everything will match up and align up and look very very uniform I'm going to explain a little more about the Clecos too 
uh, because I got a lot of questions about those uh, and just want to you know help save people some time like it was definitely a game changer whenever I found those so okay so about the Clico it's basically a tool that metal fabricators work with uh, doing body work or um, I'm sure uh, anyone restoring airplanes or working on airplanes use them uh, and it's basically to test fit metal before you um, screw it or rivet it into place so the idea is they come in various sizes uh, eighth inch uh, three sixteenths I think and half inch but the eighth inch is perfect for what I'm doing because I'm using eighth inch rivets but so ideally I have hundreds of these for the Airstream so what it is I don't know if you can see that but you squeeze it and it pulls down to a small hole and then when you have a hole see there's a piece of metal behind this and it has a hole too and you're trying to fit two pieces into place to line them up you basically stick it inside the hole and release it and it holds the two pieces of metal together so if you had this whole row with Clicos on it you could test fit the piece before you actually pop rivet it in and then you take once you get your piece in place and you take them out one at a time and screw them or pop rivet them as you go but basically try to see if you can see this again uh, whenever it pulls back it fattens up the tip here and that's what holds it in place when you squeeze it it gets skinny so that's how you insert it when you release it it fattens it up bigger than uh, the hole so it can't come back through and it holds things in place so that's basically it um, it's a lot of work back and forth in and out test fitting taking the plastic off and getting it prepped up making cuts so it'd be I couldn't imagine having to pop rivet and then drill them out every time and wallering out your holes and such so it's a, definitely a must for an Airstream project or any sort of body work or fabrication uh, you can make some use them to make some really cool designs for like metal art and stuff like that so and they're fairly cheap definitely get them if you're doing a restoration project so here's what we have so far on the end cap I'm using 2024 t3 all clad that I got from air ink and starting to rivet it into place on both sides and uh, Ian Miller from Miller Garage has a really good video on it uh, you can also check that out for more information and steady streaming Casios uh, have uh, some videos on it as well with some good detail information so basically I uh, used Reflectix and rock wool and Ian did a bunch of from Miller Garage did a bunch of um, two inch styrofoam blocks everywhere and I ended up not starting out that way um, they seem to line up fairly well on the side and when I got to my third and fourth panel I seen a use for them so we didn't have any two inch at my local hardware store Lowe's so I guess they're doing a moving everything around surprisingly enough so I got some one inch and doubled them up with some 3M high strength 90 so the green and black can is the can that you want for anything like this I've got the red and black can and it is most definitely for like temporary hoads so I did use the blocks um, starting the third and fourth panel up just on the back corner there to keep it roughly two inches away and uh, to keep it into shape a little more and what I did was I started on this side and I fit my piece I notched it out and then when I felt that it was good I took that as a template and made the opposite side so they're exactly the same and I did that for each piece once I test fit it see that it's good I cut the other piece so I was making these as I was making those as I went and this if you know anything about aluminum it is fingerprint magnet and any kind of oils or anything can um, 
cause corrosion. So what I did was I made a little skirt for my rivet gun, my pneumatic rivet gun. I put the skirt on the pneumatic air gun so oil wouldn't blow out as I'm riveting. I learned that the hard way on the back. So it, I guess, scaled it up a little bit is what they call it. So I'm basically putting them in place with the plastic on them so I don't fingerprint them all up. Overlaying the next piece, drilling all the holes, using the Klecos to hold it into place. Then once I get all the holes drilled and get everything lined up to where I like it, I take it back down, peel this plastic back along where the holes are going to be on the underlying piece, and then put the, the piece into place. And just like I did this one, pull the plastic back and rivet it in, but leaving the, the plastic on still so I don't mar them up. Also, I used to work in a, in a machine shop, so I work with metal quite a bit, and I got a metal chamfer tool, and I had these cut at a shop um, 11 and a half inches wide by four foot. I got a 32 foot roll, a couple 32 foot rolls. I'm gonna need another one from Air Parts Inc. But um, some of the the uh, cuts from the shop were really nice. Um, some of them did have burrs. So this thing will keep uh, the metal that overlaps the previous piece from, from getting scratched up or marred up. It's aluminum, it's super soft. You might have some, I have some on one or two pieces. And you know, it's just one of those things, like, you know, it's gonna get dinged up, messed up over time. If you're worried about that sort of thing, probably wouldn't go with all aluminum on the inside. Um, plus it's kind of a pain to clean, but it looks amazing. And I'm willing to, to make that sacrifice for uh, the custom fab of this Airstream. I personally don't have children to do any kind of fingerprints up. I'm basically living this thing by myself for now. Um, I don't know what the plans are on that, but so I will be the one basically maintaining it and being mindful of that. It's going to take a lot of rivets. So I got on Amazon and ordered a thousand rivets for like 35 bucks. It was way cheaper than me going to the uh, Harbor Freight or the hardware store and buying little packs it seemed to be a lot better quality product than what I was even getting at Home Depot or Lowe's so, or Harbor Freight. But with all that being said, I'm going to go ahead and dive in to the project. I'll try to get some recording done uh, as I go and uh, hopefully you all learned a little bit about this. Um, this same process goes with all the side the inner siding that I'm putting in I got to put in a couple big panels 14 foot so I have to have some help doing that um, but I'll try to document that process as well and, and I, I did a video earlier this year on the rivet measuring tool uh, as well you'll have to script through the footage if I can find it I'll put the um, the, the link or the description to the video in this video <laughs> I think I said that the link basically so let's get going
All right, so this is the example of what I was talking about as I go. So basically, I've got all my holes drilled for the next panel and to the underlying panel. Now that I've got it into place and I like it, my measurements match up with my right side down here for the to feather it in. Now I get to take all this panel back off completely. Clean all the metal shavings out of the back there so they're not scratching or seeping through or there's a bunch of metal shavings everywhere. I'm gonna peel this plastic down right here just below the um, screw holes. If not, try to land this edge on the plastic. And as I go with my rivet, I'm gonna take two or three out ahead, pull the plastic out from underneath, put it back in. I'm gonna leave this plastic on. So work this down, put the rivets back in, come back a couple holes, peel this plastic up, pop rivet it. So just kind of walk it all the way down so, you, so you're protecting the metal as much as possible uh, during this because trust me, uh, any little ding or scratch uh, will will nick it up. So that's just the life of aluminum. So let's get on with the process. So now with the panel removed, you can see where the holes landed. And there's a bunch of metal shavings and such on there. <laughs> Excuse me. So I'm going to get all those metal shavings out. I'm going to start here and peel this plastic down just below, if not right on the hole. The, click the clicos will push right through it and that will make it much easier for me to pull it out from underneath the layer and let, most importantly, the less, least, move, least amount of movement as possible. And then we'll start to pop rivet this piece in now that I know I don't have to move it sort of back and forth or here or there to uh, get the angle or the the radius that I want. So plastic is pulled back like so. Now I'm gonna go ahead and put the piece that I just removed back up, put all the clicos back in and start working uh, the metal and pop riveting it in. So this is where I was talking about working the plastic down. I hope you can see this. I got I only got two hands, so I'm gonna pull that down like that, right when it's in place, nice and tight, so it's not scratched in the middle. Maybe just come down a couple. And because I pulled it down previously, before, I'm not having to fight it. Uh, this stuff is hard enough to get off of. Period. So uh, let alone while it's tucked behind metal. So. And they just started mowing grass next door, so that's cool. Um, but, so, I'm gonna do, now that I got the top pulled down, I'm gonna start work, just barely pull up the top layer. And then put a rivet in there. Nine times out of ten, you're gonna have to open this hole up in the back a little bit. Don't waller it out, but give it a little, little once over and then should go right in and that's that and then just do just walk it down walk it down the seam and now for the most satisfying part voila I said it before and I'll say it again. If you're dealing with this 
2024 T3 all clad that's very very expensive you need to try to get this off there as soon as possible if you take it out of the box uh, if it gets outside the box and starts to get any kind of air or moisture underneath it it will leave like these sort of tiger stripe things on um, on the metal itself and there's oil that seeped through from where the um, shop cut it so I've got some Zephyr Pro 50 eliminator um, that seemed to uh, work out fairly well uh, anything else, any other products that I've tried so far and you got to be very mindful of what you're putting on aluminum just been kind of a pain in my butt to try to get off and that stuff is non corrosive it's descaling and it's a multi-purpose cleaner it's a little expensive at $25 um, 32 ounce but you can buy it by the gallon as well and it seemed to uh, get it fairly clean but most importantly clean the product comes clean itself versus like an alcohol or anything else that you're going to constantly fight with a haze or something so the video it was uh, really fun to make a little time consuming but uh, it turned out really well uh, other platforms I am on I am dropping content on rumble and Odyssey is still uploading my YouTube videos to that platform as well a lot of changes going on so I want to make sure to get my content spread uh, far and about so reach as many people as I could possibly help and if you'd like to subscribe, that'd be great. If you'd like to like the video or share it, that'd be even even better. And try to get some of these people that are watching the, the content uh, subscribed. If you'd like to support the journey, I do have an e-liquid company. It's holycowejuice.com. And I run 50% off coupons all the time. So if you know anyone trying to quit smoking or into the vaping thing, you can definitely sign up for the newsletter if you want. Maybe receive some coupons. Hit the website. It's just an easy way for um, to get some support. Plus, you know, I still work for the money. I'm not just monetizing with commercials or anything like that. I don't know how the future is going to even be on that with YouTube. So, I'm just doing this stuff for fun. This is my life. Uh, I'm just documenting it all. I have a lot of good stuff coming up. Not just the Airstream build. I will be traveling full time in this thing. Might get into a van build in the near future. We'll have to see. That is on the uh, the to do list eventually. So that should be an interesting project, and might be taking on some custom jobs as well. Maybe sort of travel full time and um, just go around and, and and do some custom work on some on some things. I think it'd be really fun to get to meet new people and uh, have fun and, and sort of make some extra income on the road as well sort of do it on site type deal so no one has to drive across the country to uh to get things done so that being said y'all have a wonderful day and until next time peace